ਡੀਅਰ ਚਿਲਡਰਨ ਆਪਣੀ ਪਿਛਲੀ ਕਲਾਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਗਲਵੈਨਿਕ ਸੈਲਸ ਜਾਂ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਕੈਮੀਕਲ ਸੈਲਸ ਦੀ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਬਾਰੇ ਜਾਣਿਆ ਸੀ ਜਿਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਪੌਂਟੇਨੀਅਸ ਰਿਡੋਕਸ ਰਿਐਕਸ਼ਨਸ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੀਕਲ એનર્ਜੀ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਿਊਸਡ ਇਨ ਥੀਸ ਰਿਐਕਸ਼ਨਸ ਦ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਟਾਈਪ ਆਫ ਸੈਲਸ ਵਿਚ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਡਿਸਕਸ ਟੁਡੇ ਆਰ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਲਿਟਿਕ ਸੈਲਸ ਇਨ ਵਿਚ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੀਕਲ એનર્ਜੀ ਇਸ ਯੂਜ਼ਡ ਟੂ ਕੈਰੀ ਦ ਨਾਨ ਸਪੌਂਟੇਨੀਅਸ ਰਿਡੋਕਸ ਰਿਐਕਸ਼ਨਸ ਆਪਣੀ ਡਿਸਕਸ਼ਨ ਨੂੰ ਅੱਗੇ ਵਧਾਉਣ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਆਓ ਇਹ ਜਾਣ ਲਈਏ ਕਿ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਦੇ ਲਰਨਿੰਗ ਆਬਜੈਕਟਿਵਸ ਕੀ ਹਨ ਔਨ ਕੰਪਲੀਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਥਿਸ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਲਰਨਰਸ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਡਿਫਾਈਨ ਐਂਡ ਡਿਸਕ੍ਰਾਈਬ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੈਸ ਆਫ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਲਾਈਸਿਸ ਲਿਸਟ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਕਟਸ ਆਫ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਲਾਈਸਿਸ ਐਕਸਪਲੇਨ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਲਾਈਸਿਸ ਆਫ ਮੋਲਟਨ ਸੋਡੀਅਮ ਕਲੋਰਾਈਡ ਡਿਸਕ੍ਰਾਈਬ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਲਾਈਸਿਸ ਆਫ ਐਕਵੈਸ ਕਾਪਰ ਸਲਫੇਟ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ ਯੂਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਇਨਰਟ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਡਸ ਡਿਸਟਿੰਗੁਇਸ਼ ਬਿਟਵੀਨ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਲਿਟਿਕ ਐਂਡ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਕੈਮੀਕਲ ਸੈਲਸ children let us now discuss about the process of electrolysis let us try to define it first electrolysis may be defined as the process of decomposition of an electrolyte when electric current is passed through either its aqueous solution or molten or fused state let us now learn about process of electrolysis The process of electrolysis is carried in a vessel made up of either glass or any other suitable material which is a bad conductor of electricity. It is called an electrolytic cell. The aqueous solution or the molten state of electrolyte is taken in this cell. Two metallic rods or plates called as electrodes are immersed in the electrolyte and are connected to the terminals of a battery the electrode connected to the positive terminal is called anode while the other connected to the negative terminal is known as cathode the cell prepared in this manner is called electrolytic cell when electric current is passed the ions present in the electrolyte are attracted towards the oppositely charged electrodes the positive ions move towards the cathode that is the negative electrode and are therefore called cations the negative ions move towards the anode or positive electrode and are therefore called anions Let me tell you that at the respective electrodes the ions get rid of their charge into neutral species this is known as primary change the neutral species may be released or discharged at the electrodes either as such or may further participate in some other change change of this type is called as secondary change ਬੱਚਿਓ ਹੁਣ ਸਮਾਂ ਹੈ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਕਟਸ ਆਫ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਲਾਈਸਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਡਿਸਕਸ ਕਰਨ ਦਾ ਵੀ ਹੈਡ ਲਰਨਡ ਥੈਟ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਲਾਈਸਿਸ ਕਾਜ਼ਸ ਡਿਸੋਸੀਏਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਦ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਲਾਈਟ ਇਨਟੂ ਇਟਸ ਰਿਸਪੈਕਟਿਵ ਆਇਨਸ ਵਿਚ ਮੂਵਸ ਟੂਵਰਡਸ ਓਪੋਜ਼ਿਟਲੀ ਚਾਰਜਡ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਡਸ ਹੇਅਰ ਦੇ ਆਇਦਰ ਅੰਡਰਗੋ ਆਕਸੀਡੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਾਈ ਲੂਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਨਸ ਔਰ ਰਿਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਬਾਈ ਐਕਸੈਪਟਿੰਗ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੋਨਸ the products of electrolysis depend upon a number of factors which we will discuss right now the first one is nature of electrolyte since the electrolytes basically take part in the redox reaction their nature will definitely influence the products that are formed at the respective electrodes we will next discuss about types of electrodes these have been broadly classified into two types that is non attackable and attackable electrodes non attackable electrodes are also called inert electrodes for example platinum or gold they simply act as carriers for the electrons 
which are accepted at the cathode and released at the anode after performing their specific roles. Let me tell you that these electrodes are in no way involved in any chemical reaction. The attackable electrodes, let's say copper electrodes, take part in the chemical reactions and influence the nature of the products. Thus, the products of electrolysis will not be the same when a particular electrolyte is subjected to electrolysis by using these two types of electrodes. Oxidizing and reducing species present in electrolytic cell. The products of electrolysis also depend upon the nature of species which either act as oxidizing or reducing agent. In many cases, there is a competition between the species to get either oxidized or reduced. However, only one will be actually involved depending upon its reduction potential. Let me tell you that at cathode, the reaction involving higher reduction potential is preferred that is the species or cation with higher E0 value will be reduced. The increasing order of discharge of a few cations at the cathode is as shown on the screen. On the contrary, at a node, the reaction with lower reduction potential is preferred that is the species or anion with lower E0 value will be oxidized. The increasing order of discharge of a few anions at the anode is as shown on the screen. Sometimes we come across certain cases where a particular process is so slow at the applied voltage that it does not take place through it is otherwise feasible. Thus, no products will be formed and extra potential known as over potential has to be applied to make it feasible. Now, hon electrolytic processes no screen te vekhiye. Sab to pehla electrolysis of molten sodium chloride da example vekde ha. In molten state, sodium chloride undergoes electrolysis as shown on the screen into sodium ions and chloride ions. On passing electric current through the molten salt taken in an electrolytic cell, the changes which take place at the cathode and anode are as shown on the screen. At the cathode, sodium ions accept one electron to form sodium in solid state. At the anode, chloride ions release electron to form chlorine. Two atoms of chlorine combine to form a chlorine molecule. Thus, Na is deposited on the cathode and chlorine is evolved at the anode. Let us next learn about electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride solution. You must be aware of the fact that sodium chloride is a strong electrolyte and it completely dissociates in aqueous solution. However, the solvent water is weak electrolyte and is very feebly dissociated. Let us now discuss that when electric current is passed through an aqueous solution of the salt, which changes take place at two electrodes which are not attackable. Let us prefer to take platinum electrodes. Let us first discuss reactions taking place. At cathode, reduction takes at cathode. In case more than one species are present around cathode, the one which is actually reduced must have greater reduction potential or greater electron accepting tendency compared to rest of the species. In the present case, water will be reduced in preference to sodium ions. As a result, hydrogen gas will evolve at cathode. You see on the screen that sodium ions accept electrons to form sodium metal having standard reduction potential of minus 2.71 volts. 
we also see that water in liquid state accepts electrons and gets reduced to hydrogen gas and hydroxyl ions in aqueous state. The standard reduction potential is minus 0.83 volts. We will now discuss reaction taking place at anode. Oxidation is expected to take place at anode where the species undergoing oxidation release electrons. Just as in reduction, if more than one species are involved, the one which is actually reduced must have higher oxidation potential. In the present case, water is expected to be oxidized in preference to chloride ions. Therefore, chlorine is liberated at a node. Have a look at the equation shown on the screen. Thus, we sum up that during the electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride solution, hydrogen in gaseous state is evolved at cathode and chlorine in gaseous state at the anode. The solution contains both sodium ions and hydroxyl ions and is of basic nature. Electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate solution using inert electrodes platinum electrodes. Aao hun screen te vekhi hai ke ki changes hunde han jado electric current no aqueous salt solution which jo langaya janda hai. At cathode, both cupric ions and hydrogen ions migrate towards the cathode but cupric ions with less discharge potential are reduced in preference to hydrogen ions which remain in the solution. Therefore, copper gets deposited on the cathode. On the contrary, at anode, we find that both sulfate and hydroxyl ions migrate towards the anode. But hydroxyl ions with less discharge potential are oxidized in preference to sulfate ions which remain in solution. Let us again have a look at equations on the screen. Thus, as a result of electrolysis, copper is deposited at the cathode while oxygen is evolved at the anode. The solution contains sulfuric acid and is therefore acidic in nature. Students, Hunasi electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate solution using attacking electrodes yani copper electrodes te charcha karange. Both copper sulfate and water will ionize as we have learnt a little while ago as shown on the screen. We find at cathode both cupric ions and hydrogen ions migrate towards the cathode but cupric ions with less discharge potential are reduced in preference of hydrogen ions which remain in solution. The copper formed is deposited on the copper electrode acting as cathode. Let us now have a look at reaction taking place. At anode. At a node, neither sulphate nor hydroxyl ions are liberated. Copper atoms from the anode are oxidized to cupric ions in preference to both these ions. Thus, the net result of electrolysis is that from the solution, cupric ions are deposited on the cathode as copper, while an equivalent amount of copper from the anode goes into the solution. Let us now discuss applications of electrolysis. The process which we discussed right now is the basis of electro refining of the metals like copper, silver, lead. The impure metal is converted into a block 
विच इज मेड एनोड इन एन इलेक्ट्रोलिटिक सेल इन विच अ प्लेट ऑफ प्योर मेटल एक्ट एज द कैथोड द इलेक्ट्रोलाइट इज द सोल्यूशन ऑफ द सोल्यूबल सॉल्ट ऑफ द सेम मेटल प्रेफरेबली अ डबल सॉल्ट ऑन पासिंग इलेक्ट्रिक करेंट मेटल आयंस फ्रॉम द इलेक्ट्रोलाइट आर रिड्यूस्ड टू द मेटल विच इज डिपॉजिटेड ऑन द कैथोड एन इक्विवेलेंट अमाउंट ऑफ द प्योर मेटल फ्रॉम द एनोड गेट्स ऑक्सीडाइज एंड द मेटल आयंस और कैटायंस गो इन टू द सोल्यूशन दिस कीप्स ऑन टिल द होल ऑफ द मेटल फ्रॉम द एनोड डिजोल्व leaving behind impurities in the form of a mud called anode mud the process of electroplating of one metal over the surface of other is also based upon this mode of electrolysis children we will now discuss about electrosynthesis electrosynthesis which is a method of producing substances through non spontaneous reactions carried by electrolysis for example in chloralkali process sodium hydroxide and chlorine are obtained by the electrolysis of an aqueous solution of sodium chloride in hall and herold process for the manufacture of aluminium alumina mixed with cryolite is electrolyzed in an iron tank with a carbon lining acting as cathode a number of carbon rods dipping in the electrolyte act as anode upon passing current the following changes which occur are shown on the screen cryolite decomposes to form sodium fluoride and aluminum fluoride aluminum fluoride breaks up into aluminum and fluoride ions which is a reversible reaction at cathode tri positive aluminum accepts 3 electrons and gets reduced to aluminum at anode fluoride ions liberate electron to form fluorine fluorine formed at anode converts aluminum oxide to aluminum fluoride students let us now discuss about faraday's laws of electrolysis the relation between the quantity of charge passed through an electrolyte and the amount of substance deposited at the electrodes forms the basis of two important laws known as faraday's laws of electrolysis these were formulated by faraday in 1834 let us discuss them one by one we will first discuss about faraday's first law of electrolysis according to the law the mass of the substance deposited or liberated at any electrode is directly proportional to the quantity of charge passed if w is the mass of substance in grams produced at the electrode by passing a charge q in coulombs then q is proportional to w is proportional to current i multiplied by time t or w is equal to i multiplied by t where z is a constant of proportionality known as electrochemical equivalent if i is equal to 1 ampere and t is equal to 1 second then w is equal to z multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 which is again equal to z thus electrochemical equivalent z be defined as the mass of the substance deposited by passing 1 coulomb of charge or by passing 1 ampere of current for 1 second through the electrolyte for example when charge of 1 coulomb is passed through 
aqueous silver nitrate solution 0.001118 grams of silver is deposited at the cathode. This represents the electrochemical equivalent of silver. Let us consider a general reaction Mn positive in aqueous state plus n electrons gives metal in solid state as shown on screen. Here A is the atomic mass of the element, M and N is the valency as well as the number of moles of the electrons taking part in the reduction reaction. Charge of an electron is equal to 1.602 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulombs. The charge on 1 mole of electron is equal to 1.602 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulombs multiplied by 6.022 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 23 which is equal to 96,000 472 coulombs. The charge on 1 mole of electrons is normally taken as 96,500 coulombs which is also called 1 Faraday of charge. Now N multiplied by 96,500 coulombs of charge will deposit a gram of the element M. 1 coulomb of charge will deposit which is equal to A upon N divided by 96,500 grams of the element. But 1 coulomb of charge deposit mass of element is equal to Z grams. Therefore, Z is equal to A divided by N multiplied by 96,500 grams which is equal to equivalent mass of element E divided by 96,500 grams. Let me remind you again that here E is known as equivalent mass of element and is equal to atomic mass or valency of the element or E is equal to 96,500 multiplied by Z. We can also say that equivalent mass of an element or substance is the mass of the element deposited by passing 96,500 coulombs of charge. Children, let us now learn about Faraday's second law of electrolysis. According to the law, when the same quantity of charge is passed through the solutions of different electrolytes connected in series, the masses of the substances deposited at respective electrodes are directly proportional to their equivalent masses. The law can be illustrated by same quantity of charge through aqueous solutions of copper sulphate and silver nitrate taken in two different cells connected in silver as shown on the screen. Copper and silver will get deposited at the cathode in both the cells. According to the law, mass of copper deposited divided by mass of silver deposited is equal to equivalent mass of copper divided by equivalent mass of silver. This law can also be derived from first law. According to Faraday's first law of electrolysis, W is equal to Z multiplied by Q. If same quantity of electricity is passed through the electrolytes, that is Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to Q. Then, in case of first electrolyte, W1 is equal to Z1 multiplied by Q. In case of second electrolyte, W2 is equal to Z2 multiplied by Q. On dividing, we get 
W1 upon W2 is equal to Z1 upon Z2 is equal to E1 upon 96500 upon E2 upon 96500 which is equal to E1 upon E2 where E1 and E2 are their equivalent masses. Points to remember. 1 Faraday or 1F is 96,500 coulombs. Charge Q on n mole of electrons is equal to n multiplied by F. Electrochemical equivalent Z is equal to E divided by 96,500. According to Faraday's first law, mass of substance deposited that is W is equal to I multiplied by T multiplied by Z. According to Faraday's law, mass of substance deposited. According to Faraday's second law, mass of A deposited divided by mass of B deposited is equal to equivalent mass of A divided by equivalent mass of B. B. Bacho, our hun electrochemical ate electrolytic cells which difference janan di koshish kariye. We have learnt about the working of both the electrolytic and electrochemical cells. Let us discuss main points of distinction in these two types of cells in the form of a table. Electrochemical cell. Electrical energy is released in the cell as a result of the redox reaction which takes place. Whereas in an electrolytic cell, electrical energy is taken up in order to bring about the redox reaction. In an electrochemical cell, the redox reaction is of spontaneous nature. Whereas in an electrolytic cell, the redox reaction is of non-spontaneous nature. In an electrochemical cell, the two electrodes are generally suspended in separate beakers or half cells. On the other hand, in an electrolytic cell, the two electrodes are kept in the same beaker or cell in the electrolyte which is either molten or in aqueous solution. Anode is negative pole while cathode is positive pole in an electrochemical cell. Whereas anode is positive electrode while cathode is negative electrode in an electrolytic cell. In an electrochemical cell, the electrons move from anode towards the cathode in the external circuit. On the other hand, in an electrolytic cell, the electrons are supplied by an external source. They enter through the cathode and are released at the anode. A salt bridge or porous pot is used to separate the two half cells in an electrochemical cell. Whereas in an electrolytic cell, no salt bridge or porous pot is needed. We will now discuss about sign conventions used during electrolysis in electrochemical and electrolytic cells. Let us once again learn about the sign conventions in these two types of cells. Electrochemical cell or voltaic cell. In an electrochemical cell, anode is where the oxidation takes place at the negative terminal. For example, Zinc in the solid state gives zinc ions in the solution that is Zn2 positive plus 2 electrons. Whereas in an electrolytic cell, oxidation takes place at the positive terminal. For example, 2 chlorine ions in the solution give 2 chlorine in the gaseous state plus two electrons. In an electrochemical cell, cathode is 
where the reduction takes place at the positive terminal. For example, copper ions in the aqua state plus two electrons give copper metal. In an electrolytic cell, cathode is where the reduction takes place at the negative terminal. For example, two sodium ions in the aqueous solution plus two electrons give two sodium metal. Students, sankhe pe jasi keh sakte haan ke ajasi electrolysis, products of electrolysis ate Faraday's law bare janaya. मैनू आस है कि तहूँ अज का पाठ चंकी तरह समझ आ गया है ध्यान देने लाजा बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अगली क्लास में नवे विषय न फिर मिलोंगे उदों तक लिए गुड बाय